Hey folks, my name's Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwai. I get asked a lot, how am I supposed to talk to my family? How am I supposed to talk to my family when, when their values and their views and their principles uh, are so different than mine? So different that that the conversation can become volatile. Well, I, I want to do that video, and I'm going to do that video right after this video. But as I was thinking about doing that video, I thought, you know, there's also a time when, when we don't talk to those kinds of people, regardless of the, whether or not they're family or friends, whether we're close or, 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 or whether the relationships are close or strained. We don't because those conversations with those people can sometimes lead us to be harmed. And I would never advocate anybody to, to do something that, that may lead to pain and suffering, that may lead to them being re-traumatized, may lead to them uh, being, being hurt or re-hurt. And, and so I began thinking about, well, what do we do with those family members? What do, what do we do with those family members who we can't talk to without causing ourselves harm? And I thought about something that I remembered in my past, a, a, a lesson that I remembered from seminary. We were talking and we were talking about family, we were talking about friends, we were talking about strained relationships, we were talking about difficult pasts, we were talking about... Uh, about families who have done people harm. And the, the person who was speaking, her name was Patricia, an incredibly, incredibly valuable person in my life, just absolutely freed me from many things. But what she was saying was, family, when you're a child, when you're a kid, family is the most essential thing to your survival. You absolutely need your family in order to survive. Whether or not your family is good and healthy or bad is irrelevant. You need your family. They're the only people you got. But she said, as time goes on and as you grow up and as you uh, are, are, are socialized out into the world, you develop a skill. And that skill is to make friends. You learn how to make friends. You learn how to start building for yourself a community of others. You learn how to start building for yourself your own community, a community of your choice. Whereas you don't get to choose who your family is, you do get to choose who your friends are. And you, as you grow, you develop that skill. As you develop that skill, and as you create that family for yourself, that community for yourself, your birth family, the family you grew up in, that family that was so essential to you as a child for your survival becomes less and less and less essential for your survival because you're building another, one of your own choice. Now, we sometimes believe that our blood, right, the family we grew up in, that family that was so essential, that group, that community that was so essential when we were growing up, we believe the myth that we must be in relationship with them. And we must be in a friendly relationship with them. But that is a myth. That is a myth. When we grow up and we've created this new community around us, we're not beholden. We're not beholden to that family of our youth. We now are freed from them. Now, what I mean by that isn't that, oh, wait, like, I never have to talk to them again. What I mean by that is we get to look at them. We get to look at them as a group and as individuals. And we get to ask ourselves, are these people people that I want to be friends with? Are these people that I would choose to spend my time, to spend my time with and to spend my energy on? Are these people, people that I would want to invest myself in? They are still family. 
and, and there is a connection and there is an inherent relationship that goes with that. But it does not mean, it does not mean we are enslaved by them. Patricia would go on to say, you get to choose, you get to choose which ones, if any, you would want to be friends with, you would want to spend time with, and you get to choose which ones you don't want to spend time with and you don't want to spend energy on, the ones that you don't want to be friends with. You see, the, the, the important thing in this choice is, is that we see them as they are today and we make our decision, not how we perceive them, and not how we perceive them to be when we were four or five or nine or 12 or 15. We must make the choice. Do we want to be friends with this person? Do we want to spend our time and energy with this person based on who they are today? I thought it was a very wise teaching, but I also had to balance it with my faith. And I Remember thinking about that story of Jesus when he's, he's in a house, he's at a house and he's teaching and he's talking and he's eating and he's drinking and somebody comes in the room and says, Lord, your family's outside, they've come to get you. And his family was probably terrified for him. They probably wanted him to knock all this Messiah nonsense off and come home and, and take up a trade or take up the family business, maybe settle down, have some kids with a, with a pretty wife. Jesus' answer, it troubled me. It troubled me. It, it, it still is abrasive to me. He says, what are you talking about? This is my family. What are you talking about? This is my mother, my brothers, my sisters. This is, this is my family. This is my community. Now, he isn't saying he doesn't love his mom and his brothers and his sisters. He's saying in that moment he is choosing to spend his time with and his energy on the people who are surrounding him in that room, the people that would surround him throughout his ministry. Again, it isn't to say he didn't choose to be friends with his mother and his brothers and his sisters, though we believe some of those relationships were strained. It was that he was choosing to give himself to this group so through these holiday seasons, I would encourage you to choose. Choose. Ask yourself, is this a person that I would want to be friends with? And if it is, invest. Enjoy. Give yourself to them and appreciate all that they give back to you. But if this is a person that you would say, hmm, I really don't think I would be friends with this person. It's okay too. Release yourself from the mythology that says you must. Release yourself from, from that falsehood that says you have a responsibility, a duty to be friends with this person. You do not. Be civil. Be loving. Be kind. Be courteous. But there's no reason for you to invest yourself in them. There's no reason for you to put yourself in a position where where you're vulnerable with these people. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray. I pray that you will choose your friends wisely. I pray that the friends you bring in, the people you bring into, into your life to be friends will, will be people who feed you and nourish you, challenge you and help you to grow. I pray that they would be people who, who bring in light and life into your world. And I pray that you will do the same for them. Amen. Namultus.